Good afternoon students, uh, welcome to the uh, continuation lecture of uh, green manufacturing on which we were studying factorial designs and uh, today what we will do is we will continue from where we left off in the previous class. So, if you look into the screen then you can see that uh, we talked about the three major set of hypothesis uh, where we just mentioned about the treatment effects hypothesis which is the raw treatment effects which is the uh, what which is denoted by the variable star and then the column treatment effects which is the beta and then we talked about the column and row or the interaction levels where is tau beta ok. We talked about all these three hypotheses and now what we are going to see is how do we do the statistical analysis of the same ok. Uh, to after the hypothesis how do we do the statistical analysis. So, the first thing we need to do is first uh, we have to calculate the parameters from the data first we calculate calculate the following parameters the following parameters from the data. So, these parameters are to be calculated from the data ok. These parameters are to be calculated from the data. So, the first parameter that we need to calculate is what we call as y i dot dot. You have already seen this dot dot business earlier in the uh, ANOVA. So, this y i dot dot is given by the equation sigma j is equal to 1 to b. So, this is 1 to b is the column. So, remember if you go back uh, in the presentation we told about this is the j. So, we are talking about j is the columns ok and i is the row remember that right. So, j is equal to 1 to b for all the values of this and we say sigma k is equal to 1 to n, k is the count for all the individual observations and we are calling it as y i j k. So, what we are saying is that for all the values of j equal to 1 to n and for all the values of k equal to 1 to n, we are uh, summing the values of the j's and k. So, the j and k will vary. So, the y i dot means we are actually doing the these the i will remain the same. So, this will be i. So, you will sum all of these k's ok for each values of this j ok. So, that will give us the uh, y i j dot. So, then uh, from here we can calculate y i dot dot bar that can be calculated which will be is equal to y i dot dot which is the summa summation of this divided by b times n b n uh, for so, we can say i is equal to 1 to all the way to a. So, for each row we will calculate y i dot dot bar. So, to calculate y i dot dot bar we require y i dot dot and that y i dot dot is calculated by this particular equation. Similarly, the next thing that we calculate is y dot j dot this is the next thing that we will calculate as part of this next parameter and the y dot j dot is calculated as here the index will be on i first summation of i is equal to 1 to a for all rows now we are doing ok. And we are going to do the next one is k is equal to 1 to n. So, for all individual observations we are doing it as y i j k. So, the index is on i and k in this time. So, i and k will vary j will remain constant. So, which implies y dot j dot bar the average of that which will be equal to y dot j dot divided by a times n where we say j is equal to 1, 2 all the way up to b. So, in this case what we are doing is the previous scenario as we were doing for each individual columns ok. So, we were doing the y i dot dots for each individual values we will doing be the y dot j dot will be do be done for each uh, each one of these columns ok. Whereas, this will be done for each individual rows ok right. So, with that so we calculate this second parameter. So, first we calculate the summation value. So, these are the 
So, this will give you the sums ok, this is the sum ok, this is also a sum ok, this gives you the average ok, this also is a another average or a mean value right. So, then uh, what we do is we calculate the third one we are going to do is y i j dot ok. So, what we are going to do is i and j remains the same and the k will vary. So, this is, is equal to summation of k is equal to 1 to n ok y i j k. So, what we are doing is for i and j for all i and j they will remain the same, but we are just going to do the uh, summation on the k. So, then from here we can calculate y i j dot bar ok the average of this. So, this is a sum ok using the sum we calculate this average and this is calculated as y i j dot divided by n ok and here for this case it is meant for all i is equal to 1 2 3 all the way up to a and j is equal to 1 2 3 all the way up to b ok this is meant for this particular case. So, this is also another average ok you can think about it as a third average. Then the fourth parameter that we are going to calculate in this case will be in this particular scenario will be y dot 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 ok all the three things. So, that means it is a summation it is a summation of all the three values. So, you have sum of i is equal to 1 to a then you sum on the columns j is equal to 1 to b and then you sum the individual observations the replications within this ok k is equal to 1 to n ok and we do it is y i j k. So, what we are doing here is the y dot 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 is a sum the sum of all observations then where you are indexing on i j and k and summing it up. So, this will give you definitely another average which is the y dot 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 bar ok. So, this is the grand average or the big average of the averages which will be y dot 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 divided by a times b times n. So, what happens is a is the so a is the number of levels of factor a ok b is the number of levels of factor b ok fine. So, a and b are the different type of levels that we talk about. So, all these parameters are mandatory for us to be calculated so that we can calculate the the rest of the major thing. So, the first thing that we need to calculate is after this is done is the total sum of squares. Remember we were calculating the sum of squares in the case of ANOVA and total sum of squares uh, can be calculated as can be calculated as ok. So, the total sum of squares in the ANOVA we were using it using a particular mechanism in this case the total sum of squares will be uh, equa given by the equation sigma i is equal to 1 to a sigma j is equal to 1 to b and then the replication sigma k is equal to 1 to n n replications y i j k these are the individual observations minus y dot 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 bar ok whole square. So, these are the individual observations observations and whereas in this case this is the mean ok which is the um, average of all observations ok or the grand mean ok. So, what we do is individual observations minus the average of all observations find the deviation you square them and sum across all these values then you will get the total sum of squares in this particular case. So, uh, I think you guys understand what I was talking about in this case where we first calculate different sums the raw sum, a column sum and then uh, individual uh, what we call as the uh, replication sum then we also calculate the grand sum and using which we calculate different averages ok fine. Now, the second part of this once we calculate all these values remember we had something called as an ANOVA table. So, same way we will be creating another ANOVA table here. 
So, to do that ANOVA table, there is some more things that we need to do, ok. So, the sum of squares of total, ok, also in another way is that the sum of squares of total, which means the total sum of squares, ok, has the following components. So, remember in this example we are doing a components. Uh, so, for this for this particular case we have the we have a factor A, we have a factor B, ok. Then we have uh, interaction of A B right and then there is error we had all the we mentioned all these kind of things. So, the sum of squares of total ok which is also known as SST is the sum of squares has the component due to sum of squares of A, factor A, sum of squares due to factor B and sum of squares due to factor A, B and my bad, sum of squares of error, ok. So, this is how we actually uh, calculate or the total sum of squares has these particular components, ok. Typically what we do is we calculate, so this is calculated and this is also calculated ok and this is obtained by subtraction. So, if when we calculate the sum of squares of total and these three are calculated then the difference of these three with from the sum of total will give you the sum of squares of error right. So, that is how we calculate this when we do the ANOVA table it will become little bit more clear to you. And what we also do is we also need to know the degrees of freedom of freedom associated with each sum of the squares associated with each sum of squares are to be calculated. We need to calculate this. Why? Why do we need to calculate these degrees of freedom? So that mean squares can be calculated. Okay. How do you calculate mean squares? Okay. So the by definition, the mean square MS is equal to sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. So this is our fundamental equation on which we actually make the the sum of squares, uh, we connect the sum of squares with the mean squares. So, the main effects in this case is the effect for us in this regard is, is due to factor A, then factor A, B, factor B and then factor A, B, okay, which is the interaction. Okay. Then we have is the error and then we have is the total. Okay. So, these are the effects that we have, all the effects that are associated with this. Then we also have is the degrees of freedom, ok. So, what are the degrees of freedom in this regard? The major degrees of freedom in this regard is the effect of A is given by A minus 1, ok. So, this is uh, 1 less than levels of factor ok. So, the factor is the number of factors is A. So, you reduce 1 out of it is 1 less than the number of levels in this regard. So, you get A minus 1 right. Then the B is given by B minus 1. There are small b this many number of levels. So, 1 out of minus out of this will give you the degrees of freedom. The A B interaction is given by A minus 1 multiplied by B minus 1. And uh, the question obviously is that why it is always one less than that. That question, please, uh, you know, I we have mentioned, we have explained this in the previous uh, uh, one when we did the analysis of variance. Because the reason is that if you have n observations, you only need to specify n minus one of them because the nth one can be always obtained by uh, by specifying the n minus one and uh, the average of it, right? 
then the so we get the three uh, the interaction uh, sum of squares or degrees of freedom are also this way. Then the other degrees of freedom is the error which is calculated by a b times n minus 1, n is the number of replications in this regard. So, n minus 1 times a times b will give you the error degrees of freedom and the total degrees of freedom is given by a b n all of this multiplied by minus 1. So, this is the a b n is the number of levels of a, number of levels of b and number of replications all of them put together and multiply them okay, and then uh, minus 1 will give you the degrees of freedom in this regard. So, these degrees of freedom are important for us to, okay. so this information is necessary, information is necessary for us to build the ANOVA table. The ANOVA table is required to analyze the factorial effects of the factors and their interactions. Okay. So, obviously then we will move to the how do we do create the or how do we build the ANOVA table for the two factor factorial experiments. Okay. So, the uh, given ANOVA table is a template is a template that can be followed, that can be followed for all two factor factorial experiments. Okay. So, please remember this is a template, okay. this ANOVA table is a template. Template means you can take this template and it can be followed for any of the two factor factorial experiments. Okay. Uh, but understand that you instead of these values you will have to put appropriate uh, names of the factors and other aspect in this regard. So, the table is typically drawn in this fashion, I cannot draw straight lines, so please bear with me. Okay. So, this is the, the titles will go here. Okay. Um, so, the first column what we call it as the source of variation. the first column will give you the source of variation. Then the next one we will call it as the sum of squares, okay. that is the second one that we will do. The third one is the degrees of freedom. Right. Then the next one what we do is, what we calculate is mean square, mean squares. right? And then what we do is finally, we calculate as the f values okay, or the f distribution values. Remember okay, uh, in this regard one of the things that you need to remember is f values, f distribution tables. Please study what is an f distribution, it is a which belong to the chi square family of distributions anyway we will uh, talk about this later. Okay. So, the source of variation, the major sources of variations are written here, A treatments. Okay. Uh, so, whatever is the factor A and the type of treatments we write there, then we write the B treatments, let me give some space in this regard, because this is a template. So, you can do it that way, the B treatments. Then we have is the interaction, interaction these are the another source of variation. Then what we have the third source of variation is the error and the last source of variation is the total. So, we will write all these things right here and this is the table template in this regard. Okay. So, then the sum of squares are to be done. So, here is S S of A and this is the S S of B. We do not write this here, but the S S of A is calculated where we will be actually using SS of A to be calculated. I will give you the equations how to calculate this later, but using these factors that we have seen, we will be calculating these uh, sum of squares in this regard. And remember, sum of squares total A, B, A, B and error are the factors of it. So, individual sum of squares will actually go in this regard. In the third case, it will be SS of A, B will go here, the numerical value will go here actually. 
the error will be SS of error will go here and the SS of total will go in this regard. SST is the total. It is not SST is not treatments, SST is the total, sum of squares of total. Okay. Then the degrees of freedom, okay. remember the individual degrees of freedom I have mentioned to you what it is. So, that degrees of freedom are also put in this table as factor of it, so that you, anybody can understand what is going on. So, for A that will be A minus 1 as I mentioned earlier, because there is A of A such treatment levels for factor A. For B it will be B minus 1 and for A B it will be A minus 1 multiplied by B minus 1. Okay. So, then the sum of squares of error will also be A B multiplied by N minus 1 and the last one the total will be A B N minus 1. Right. So, you can see that if you sum all of these values then you will get the total sum of squares and the, the degrees of freedom they will all sum uh, nicely with each other. Right. So, then once it is done we have the sum of squares and the degrees of freedom the next thing for us to do is the calculate the mean squares. Okay. So, the ms of a mean squares of a treatment is, is equal to sum of squares of a divided by a minus 1. So, if you take the sum of squares of A divided by its own degrees of freedom, you get the mean squares of A. Similarly, the mean squares of B is calculated by sum of squares of B divided by B minus 1. So, sum of squares of B is already calculated here, B minus 1 is the degrees of freedom. So, using that degrees of freedom, you can calculate the mean squares of B. Right? Then the next one is the mean squares of AB or what we can call it as I am calling AB in this case which is the interaction which is equal to sum of squares of AB we calculate the sum of squares of the interaction then divided by the degrees of freedom which is A minus 1 multiplied by B minus 1. Right? So, once you divide the interaction sum of squares with its own degrees of freedom you get the mean squares of the uh, interaction. Then the last mean square we calculate is the mean squares of error MSE right? and the MSE is calculated as sum of squares of error SSE divided by what we call as uh, the error degrees of freedom that is AB times AB multiplied by N minus 1. So, with the, this system so we calculate the mean squares of errors. We do not calculate the mean square of total because absolutely that is not required in this regard. So, these four mean squares, the uh, mean square due to the main effect of the factor A, mean square due to the main effect of factor B, mean square due to the interaction effect and then the mean square due to the error, all those four mean squares are calculated. right? Then after this is done, the next thing that we end up doing is we calculate the F values. Okay? So, there are three F values that are calculated. The first F value is calculated by MSA, the mean squares of A divided by mean squares of error. Okay. So, we use mean squares of error to calculate the F value for the treatments. So, how the F value will de now determine how significant or how important or how much of an effect is created by the A treatment levels in this regard. Similarly, we calculate the next F value which is equal to ms of b this is due to the effect of the b factor and you divided by ms error right so the mean square of error the ratio of ms b to ms error uh, will give you the f value the critical f value for the b treatment so it will actually if this value is significant then we will know that the factor b has a direct impact on the outcome or the y right and then the last critical value we calculate is the f0 for interaction which is given by ms of ab okay this interaction divided by ms of error right so the mab mean squares of ab divided by mean squares of error will tell you how much significant the interaction is so these three critical values the critical values of f critical values of f f zeros will tell the uh, factor factors or interactions that are significant okay. 
So, if the f value of this a and interactions comes to be significant then we know that we need to focus on a and as well as the a b interaction and we can ignore b uh, when we are actually doing this kind of things. So, remember once again this table has 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, 5 columns and the first column is a source of variation which tells you the A treatments, the B treatments, the interaction, the error and the total as the individual factors that come that constitute the sum of squares and remember the sum of squares of total is given by okay and this is the SST sum of squares of total and this is the SSE error right. So, sum of squares of total is the sum of squares of A, B, A, B and error okay. So, all those factors A, B, A, B error okay which will give you the sum of squares of total. So, you can think about this as this is equal to the sum of all these ones okay. Then the next one we have also seen previously is the degrees of freedom. How the degrees of freedom it is basically 1 less than the number of observations that we have available there. So, a minus 1, b minus 1, a minus 1 times b minus 1, a b times n minus 1, then a b n minus 1. So, these were the values that we calculated. Then the mean squares were calculated as the mean squares of a which is a sum of squares of a divided by the degrees of freedom, mean squares of factor b, the mean squares due to direct factor is sum of squares of b divided by the b minus 1 which is degrees of freedom. Then the mean squares of a b is a sum of squares of a b divided by the interaction degrees of freedom which is a minus 1 times b minus 1 and mean squares of error is calculated as sum of squares of error divided by the error degrees of freedom. So, these mean squares are calculated. Then using the mean squares of error which is the common to the all the denominator the critical f values for the factor a then for factor b and for the interaction a b is calculated and we, these critical f values helps us to determine uh, how to make the decision okay a decision and uh, which factors are to be focused on so this brings us to the end of this uh, presentation but the most important thing that we have to understand out of this is now we will take this problem and we will do the numerical analysis but these analysis of variance table that we just showed in the previous slide need to be uh, clear in your minds. You should be able to understand and recognize it and should be able to read it and you should be able to produce it and uh, I will show you in the next uh, session how to calculate these numbers and once these numbers are calculated you can actually uh, use these numbers to uh, study the which factor is critical, which interactions are critical and can go from there. So, thank you for your patient listening and uh, we will see you soon. Thank you very much.